Now we come to the malignant lid tumors. So what are the three malignant lid tumors? We have the most common one that is the basal cell carcinoma. There is no confusion. Please remember this is the most common one. If they ask that there is a predisposing condition and now there is a lid tumor, a malignant type of lid tumor, what it can be the most commonly it is squamous cell carcinoma. The third one is if they ask that the lid tumor is in the upper eyelid, usually the basal cell carcinoma is there in the lower eyelid. If the lid tumor is in the upper eyelid, it is destroying the lid architecture and in a 60 year old female, what is your differential diagnosis? Most commonly that is a sebaceous cell carcinoma. Now let us learn some important points regarding these three tumors. So first of all is the most commonly asked type of malignant lid tumor that is basal cell carcinoma. Also called rodent ulcer. So that means as you can see in this picture. <coughs> there is a excavating type, a nodulo ulcerative type of lesion. So the most common presentation is nodulo ulcerative type. Okay. Now, sometimes they ask, what is the most common site? You can just remember it with this type of diagram. One, two, three and four. So most commonly it is seen in the lower eyelid. Secondly, it can be seen in the medial canthus region, then superior eyelid. And last but not the least is the lateral canthus. Okay, most common is my lower eyelid. Okay. Now, when you do a surgical excision, so the treatment here is surgical excision, you do a wide base of surgical excision, you can see palisading type of appearance in the histopathology. And one recent update is that there is a drug, a oral drug, which is being used in the periocular basal cell carcinoma. The name of the drug is Vismo de Gimp. Okay, so the oral drug which is being used in the periocular basal cell carcinoma. These are some important points that you should remember. The next type of malignant lid carcinoma is squamous cell carcinoma. When I started the discussion, I told you that if the lid carcinoma basically they have given the history it has been there after some predisposing condition the most common type is squamous cell. So what are the predisposing conditions for squamous cell carcinoma? These are actinitic keratosis, Bowen's disease, Previous history of any squamous cell carcinoma in head. And last but not the least, exposure to radiation. So these are very, very important and I request you that please remember the predisposing conditions. Most of the times they would give you a question with these hints only. Now, like your basal cell carcinoma, this is also a type of ulcerative type of carcinoma, but the presentation most of the times can also be polypoidal as well. Okay, so both ulcerative and polypoidal presentation can be there, and the treatment here again is wide based surgical resection. Now the question they ask is 
that when you do a surgical excision what would you see in the histopathology so remember it is the as you all know in the histopathology the presence of keratin pulse okay so like palisading appearance in the basal cell carcinoma and keratin pulse in the squamous cell carcinoma and these tumors have predisposition for metastasis to preauricular as well as submandibular lymph nodes as well these are some important points you should remember regarding the squamous cell carcinoma now few years back i still remember i got this lady and she basically gave me a history of that she has got some lid surgeries done in the past and now she has come with this big lesion what you can see here that this is an upper lid lesion it has destroyed the lid architecture and you cannot find even many eyelashes so there is a loss of eyelashes there is a medarosis as well so these are the basic features of a sebaceous cell carcinoma very important most commonly the question is asked on the sebaceous cell carcinoma presentation okay and as the word says because this is a sebaceous cell carcinoma so they would ask which glands are involved so definitely we have our mebomian glands that are involved whenever you see a female upper lid involved from indian some continent you always think about your sebaceous cell carcinoma so sebaceous cell carcinoma is the most common type of upper lid carcinoma okay so when we talked about the basal cell carcinoma basal cell carcinoma is the most common type of total lid carcinomas and if they specific ask for upper lid remember the basal cell carcinoma is happening in your lower lid if they are asking about the upper lid then your answer would be sebaceous cell carcinoma okay now one last feature that i would like that you should remember is that on histopathology you can basically see that there is a pegatoid spread so what is the meaning of pegatoid spread so there may be one lesion here and the other lesion which is distant from the first lesion and the space between the two lesions is normal okay so that is how the pegatoid spread is there in the sebaceous cell carcinoma so with this i end the features of various types of lid tumors one one liner that i would like you should remember is that if they say ask that which is the specific type of lid tumor that you see in the hiv positive individuals this is the kaposi sarcoma remember it is not there as a sebaceous cell carcinoma i am just writing it here that a lid tumor which is specific for hiv positive individuals that is kaposi sarcoma